What's going on? How you doing? My name is David Crook and welcome to today's episode of Mixing Monday where every Monday I drop a video relating to mixing and mastering whether it's mixing and mastering beats or mixing and mastering vocals and today's video is how to mix your beats using Wave Studio Rack but before we get into the video I want to remind you to subscribe and drop a like. I have a beat here. It's the same beat I used on my last video. On the last video I showed you four free super fire vintage plugins you can add onto your beats just to give it that vintage feel give it that vintage texture i'll link that video down below in the description and you can check out those plugins super fire i'm gonna play the beat and then we'll get into it When it comes to mixing beats using Wave's new studio rack, one thing you want to keep in mind is you need Wave plugins. But other than that, one of the coolest things about it is, and probably one of my favorite things about it, is the multi-band split. The fact that you, you can split the frequencies in half and whatever plugins you decide to add on those low frequencies are just going to stick to those low frequencies. And you no longer have to just use a compressor and compress everything. You can now specifically choose what you want to compress and that's one of the coolest things for example this loop here if i were to play it without the studio rack you could hear a bass line in the background and that's something i want to emphasize within the beat but not too much so what i did is i added a multi-band split so you just pretty much go here add a multi-band split and then i Put the frequencies at 7, 706 and that's what's going to be split in between there so for the bottom half i have a bass writer and all i really did is just have it there just to emphasize certain notes which is mostly like those high notes that i wanted to pop out a little bit more and then the deeper notes i want just to lower it just a little bit And then I have the CLA-3 just to compress it just because this is a compressor I like adding when I mix like bass lines and 808s and stuff like that. There's something about this compressor that just makes a low end just pop out a bit more. And then the cool thing about it is that you can also solo it. So if I just want to hear those low frequencies off that loop, I can. I could just solo it. And then I could really hear what that compressor is doing to that low end. Not only that, but I could also add a little bit of width. So if I want to widen up that low end a bit, I could just probably boost this up probably about like 135 around there. And then I could also focus on those high frequencies. So for the high frequencies, all I really did is just compress it with the CL8 2 I also added an EQ just to boost up some of those higher ends. And you can also pan everything left and right. So for example, if I want to pan those high frequencies like to the right, I can. Or to the left. And then I could also make it wider. You get very creative on what you want to do, whether it's like to your melodies, to your loops, or to your drums. For my drums, I did the same thing. I added a multi-band split, and then I added max bass for the kick, just to give it more punch, give it more harmonics onto that kick, making it fuller, just to punch through the mix a bit more. And then I had a pull tech. I could have just added the pull tech on the chain here, but I just decided to throw it on here to make it look cooler. <laughs> And then I just boosted up those low frequencies at 100. I have the CLA-3 just to compress that kick just a little bit. Not too much just because I will be compressing it more. I just want it just to tighten up that kick just a little bit. And then from here what I did is 
those high frequencies like for example the snare the hi-hat the open hat and whatever like percussion i have in there it is being compressed by the cl82 the reason i'm using two compressors is just to add some color to the drums just to dirty them up just a little bit each one of these compressors is going to add like a certain color to the drums and i just decided to add both of them and then i also added each channel just made it clip just a little bit just to give it more distortion another cool thing about waves studio rack is that you could search up a plugin so for example if i wanted just to add ssl e channel if i want to add another one i could just search up ssl and then it's here under eqs this saves you so much time so for example you don't have to go all the way down all the units waves and then look in between all these plugins here just to look for the ssl you can now just search them up and not only that but this also helps you save a lot of cpu so you're not forcing your computer your laptop just to overwork you could use wave studio racks to mix and then it also saves you a lot of cpu so instead of having a bunch of plugins within here i now just have for example studio rack here studio rack on the the baseline which has just max bass residence in the cla three and then i have another instance of studio rack on my drums and i could just mix all my drums here and like i said you could get very creative so if i want to like make those drums a bit wider i could just add some width to it and then it just spreads out those drums there it also helps for reverb so for example i have it here the manny reverb is just busting it onto onto all my instruments and then i have this eq just to cut out that low end and then i have mb2 just to bring up more of that reverb i've been using this to mix my beats and so far i love it i have no complaints about this if you don't want to multi-band split your chain you can also do a parallel split or you could just specifically choose a delay or a dynamic it's all everything is pretty much organized between compressors and then there's eqs effects harmonics others you have reverbs here everything is just labeled and then if, like i said you can also search specific plugins it also improves your workflow so that's one of the things i really like about this overall wave studio rack just helps a lot because you can save cpu you can specifically choose what plugins you want on what frequencies like i said you can get very creative on what you're doing to your beats and it just it helps keep everything organized and then you can really choose what you want on your plugins and that's one of the coolest things about wave studio rack i'll be linking it down below in the description so you can check it out and if you don't own wave plugins and you want to purchase some i have a discount code down below in the description also so if you find a plugin for like 29 bucks and you want to purchase it you get it for 26 bucks which is very cheap now if you want to get your song mixed and mastered by me feel free to hit me up on instagram or on my website everything will be down below now if you want to see me mix and master live i am hopping on instagram live more often I'm just going on Instagram live, cooking up beats, mixing songs, mastering songs, mixing vocals. So if you have a question, you can ask me on Instagram live and I'll be able to answer directly. If, if you want me to show you something, I could show you. That way you get the quickest response and you don't have to wait. So I want to remind you to subscribe and drop a like. My name is David Crook and I hope to see you next Monday for the next episode of Mixing Monday. Peace.